So it is 16.26 p.m. It is Wednesday. Happy hump day, y'all. So, if you're out there clapping cheeks, you want something to listen to while you're doing that to drown out the noise of clapping, here you go. <laughs> so, I am doing a documentary review, actually. And I'm more surprised that I'm up to over 800 reviews on this shit. <laughs> Movies and shows combined, like, damn. I didn't even realize that I've been just, like, turning them out left and right. Fuck. So, I have... Jared from Subway, Catching a Monster. Yeah, this was an interesting one. Because it was on my radar after I saw Quiet on set. I was like, okay, I want to see what happened with Jared. So, here's my thoughts. I remember the hype of Jared Fogle and his subsequent arrest for kitty porn. I remember that shit. I didn't know he was a pedo, so this will be interesting seeing how it unfolds. Yeah, definitely very interesting. I get how depressing weight gain was for him. And I also want to say that if you don't want to watch the doc, you can just listen to this shit because I'm going through the whole thing. <clears throat> Man, I get the depression weight gain. I really do. I ate my way via depression, PTSD, death, and other shit to 437, which was my heaviest. Now I'm at 385 or 410, give or take. So I've gained a lot over the years. My lowest was 297 and 333. 297 in high school, 333 out of school. Yeah. I'm surprised he blew up to 425 back then, but then I get the awkwardness because you don't know how to fit in or exist. It happens. What drove him to be a pedophile, though? Did the fame get him, or was it always there just waiting for the right opportunity? And they never really explained that shit. They never really did. I mean, the sword did, but not really. <laughs> like, oh well. It's a real inspirational story, especially when you factor in the lack of health-conscious people back then who really inspired change. They really did. It's wild. Because the only people back then that were inspiring health change during his tenure and rise to power was, um, or fame, uh, Richard Simmons. Uh, yeah, Richard Simmons... Uh, some celebrities that were on that, but not a lot of them. And I don't even think any of the presidential candidates back then pushed for it. The only one that I can really relate this to is Michelle Obama's nutrition program that started off good, then went downhill. So, yeah. <clears throat> Rochelle looks like Roseanne's twin sister. She does. Shame her marriage to Tom didn't pan out, but that's young love. First marriages never pan out. If you're married right now, it's your first marriage. It may or may not pan out. Uh, so she became the neighborhood mom, helping others out, and a radio talk show host. Epic. Good sunset shot, too. I love them shots. They always throw them in there. It's like, oh, sunset. Sunrise. Wow. Pretty. <laughs> Retrospectively, he was the first influencer before social media was a thing. And that's unreal. That's really unreal. When you look back at that, how he was the first one before all social media even was a fucking thought. He was the first. Crazy. Oh, there's many of them that were the first that were really popular in history. But yeah. So he's flirting with Rochelle and tells her he's hot. He thinks middle school girls are too. My oh my. <laughs> Rochelle's daughter was cute as a button back then. She really was. She had that cute little smile. Like, aww. Because I remember um, when I look at my old childhood photos of me and my cousins together. Like, we were so adorable. And shit. And I miss those days. It's wild. Uh, I swear I don't get the sex appeal. <coughs> Ew, that is disgusting. Ugh. I need a drink. Gross. Ugh. I don't get the sex appeal factor, honestly. I really don't get that shit. Like, why? <laughs> mm. That's better. I mean, most of the ones I've seen caught with Chris Hansen or Jason misspent youth, quick thrill, and odd companionship. Seriously, one of them, one or two of them wanted just a companion. They didn't even want sex. I'm like, okay. 
<clears throat> I remember the dumbest one was the guy who brought his kid with him and couldn't find a sitter. <laughs> and the other guy who showed up twice naked. <laughs> I love that dude. He's so funny. It really shows in the picture of her with Jared and the two students, her distaste for what he told her. It does. Just look at her eyes. It shows. Uh, Rochelle got his cell number and started recording him. Remember this going forward. She baited him good, going back to Pamela and friends of Jared. Pam pointing out how difficult lim limelight was for a year is true. Because if you're popular and shit, that limelight will twist your perception so quickly. And give you that ego you never thought you had. And I can't imagine the pressure of of 15 years in Jared's mind. That's a long time being a spokesperson and being, you know, the front man for your company. Like, that's a long time. Damn, he wanted Rochelle to put her hair in pigtails for him. Crazy bastard. <laughs> Shame the dictaphone didn't work. I forgot there's existed. <laughs> you call it a tape recorder, it's called a dictaphone. You know, Rochelle gathering evidence is just like me with Tina back in 2006 when she was cybering with teens on all poetry. Yeah. Technically, what Rochelle's doing is entrapment. <laughs> Jared likes fetish clubs and specifically wants a 9 or 10 year old. Wild. What the hell did Russell Taylor do? Like, I remember that name popping up and I, I'm like, who the fuck's Russell Taylor? Damn, he got with Christian and Hannah's mom, who went from strict Christian mom to carefree mom. Awesome. Even encouraging them to drink and smoke weed. Pretty common. Like, it's common to do that. Some parents are cool as fuck like that. Most of them will encourage it, and they will be like, you know, if you're going to drink and smoke shit, you're going to do it at the house. You're not going to do it at a friend's house. We're gonna, you're going to do it under supervision. That's cool. I don't mind that. Not bad. Some parents are always like that. Depends on who you talk to. He even moved them into a bigger house so the girls had their own rooms. Ain't he nice? Russell had his own film production company, too. Wow. I should hit him up and make a movie. <laughs> Rochelle was smart to go to the FBI, and the entrapment came to bite her in the ass. Called it. <laughs> That's why I was like, that bitch is doing entrapment. <laughs> Because in some states, you actually have to get permission from the other person to record them. <laughs> Funny shit. Oh, my. But they wanted her to work with them so she wouldn't be arrested and became an asset for them. Crazy. And his youngest was 11 or 12. Wow. Rochelle's right about his confession on having someone that young versus bullshit on it. Yeah. You really, it's, it's true. You can lie smooth as butter to anyone about a subject. I can do that. It's easy as fuck. I murdered somebody. I did. I killed him. I had a fucking bottle here. I'm like, no, don't shake it any harder. I'm gonna fizz. But when you talk about something true, your tone shifts to match the event you're telling and your body language as well. Yeah. I open this bottle because fuck it, I want to know what happens. Nothing. <laughs> Bob's right about being attracted to kids isn't a crime unless you act on it. It should be, but it's not. Because if, if they acted on that every fucking time, they'd have numerous reports to fill out. And it would just be a waste of time. Those handoffs are super important because having them in an undisclosed location benefits both of them for safety reasons. Although this day and age, it could be trickier given how easy it is to track someone through a camera lens. <laughs> yeah. Hell, the Dark Knight proved that in 2008 and foreshadowed how technology would evolve. Mm-hmm. Man, she had to make multiple drops in a night after phone calls with Jared. Jesus. Oh, my. Hannah and Christian pointing out how their lives improve with Jared and Russell around really does show how things could change in the blink of an eye. It really does change that quick. I always find it ironic how quickly people will shun the fuck out of someone who does bad shit and ignore all the good they did beforehand. Yeah. Like the good can't be celebrated without being overshadowed by the bad. 
Like, it's so dumb. I can separate that shit easy because it doesn't affect me personally. I like that Jared started an amazing movement at a time when popularity was organic and meaningful. Most of the shit today, today's popularity is literally, look what I can do with the latest smartphone. Or look at me, I'm famous on TikTok for dancing or some shit. Nobody cares. It's dumb and ruined the entire phenomenon of organic popularity. It really did. Like, organic popularity is something that I cherish and really root for. It's something to really get behind because you really rally behind that shit. It's like, wow, this motherfucker did that for themselves without help. And look where they're at now. They did it organically. They became popular through organics. Hmm. Whereas if you want to get popular today, all you got to do is some stupid fucking dance or put a hashtag on it. <laughs> Lame. It's not even, it's dumb. And going back to that, same goes for Chris Benoit. His work should be respected and celebrated despite murdering his family and killing himself. I'll die on that hill. It's sad what Rochelle's work did to her kids during that time frame. Man, he's fucking kids in Thailand. I'm not surprised by that, because Thailand is the wild west of deviant pleasure. <laughs> it really is. Oh, my. J fucking Thailand, Japan, China, Korea's. Yeah. Overseas is a wild west of good shit. It depends on where you go. Are you speaking from experience? Oh, i just seen a lot of different videos. <sighs> Jared making comments about Hannah and Christian's friend is wild. Just like Rochelle's career and mental health taking a hit over talking with Jared. Yeah. He's like, man, her breasts are awesome. Why are you hanging out with someone talks about my boobs like that? Uh, Rochelle's daughter read her mom's diary on Jared and it changed their dynamic as a result. That sucks. And I wonder how the sting operation on him is going to go. Wow, he legit said he wants her to watch him pound a little kid. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Ooh, man. He's a twisted bastard going for the broken home personality of a seven-year-old. <sighs> I do understand that, though, because most of my friends growing up had that going on in some way, the broken home personality. But we never prayed on each other specifically for that trait. Fuck, no, that's dumb. Nah, we bonded because we came from a broken home. You look for someone who can give you stable ground to walk and build on. In that, you gain trust, and the trust goes a long way in lifelong friendships, relationships. Yeah. You have security, trust, confidence, accountability, acceptance, love, and a new healthy home to fall back on. And that's very important when it comes to that. Because you see so many people in and out of foster care or they had a great life, but their parents were fucking narcissists. And narcissists will abuse that in every way possible. And that's sad. I know that. I've lived with a narcissist. Fuck. And it's pretty wild he's teaching how to groom kids. <laughs> Crazy shit. He's like, oh, I want, you to, I want them to see your huge boobs and your big ass. I'm like... Such a kid. Such a little kid. I love it. <laughs> Is it just funny hearing his voice on this recorder and shit? Like, wow. And he asked to see her kids naked. Okay, cool. <laughs> Damn, Sting was a bust. Oh no, the NWO won. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, because his schedule changed. Ain't that some shit? You know, her becoming more withdrawn during the investigation. I do wonder if she ever found herself thinking like him during that time frame. I really do wonder. I mean, it can happen. But the way she's acting through this whole thing, like, it's traumatizing. It's rough. And at the same time, it's like, is it ever going to get better, you know? Uh, oh my, Russell got busted for child porn. Shit. Pretty ballsy that Rochelle went to the Sarasota Police Department for help and they couldn't because no crime had been committed. Ain't that a bitch? And she was going to play them tapes on the radio. Jesus. 
you imagine that? Like, listening into the radio station, I was like, you hear Jared, let me see your kids naked. Jared? <laughs> Shit, she was diagnosed with suicide disease in 2012. Fuck. Bummer. But sometimes you gotta go through the dark to see the light. Like Dave Germain says. In Indiana, it's not illegal to own pics or vids of bestiality, but performing it is. <laughs> Oddball laws. I love it. I, I love the oddball laws in these states. They're so stupid. You can't have this, but you can do that. <sighs> you can't have this, but you can fuck that. Oh, brother. Holy hell. Russell Taylor was an animal fucking. Oh, my. <laughs> I've seen horse porn before. Jesus, that shit is weird. Like, Splat. You know what I'm talking about. If you've seen that shit, like, Jesus. Oh, fuck. <laughs> And he had Hannah and Christian's mom fucking the horse. Oh my god. And the hidden cameras in the bedrooms. It gets worse. <laughs> oh my. The girls had to identify their friends in pics too. That's not what I'm talking about. Man, Russell sent a nude kid to Jared and Jared asked, when does he get a turn? Not that either. Good god, man. This is wilder than I thought it would be. Way wilder. I remember seeing the FBI raid Jared's home on TV. I remember when that happened. I was like, what? <laughs> Why? Jared had 5.6 terabytes of data total that the FBI had to sift through. That's a lot. My, oh my, Jared spent 12K on sex workers a year. Damn, and I thought they were going to, after I heard that, I was like, oh man, they're going to round out everything he spent his money on. And they didn't. I was mad. <laughs> If I rounded up all the money I spent on lube in a year, it'd be like under a hundred bucks. Oh, he's a horny bastard. Hornier than me. Fuck. Man, those texts are wild. And at the popular hotels in NYC with them prostitutes. Jesus. What's really wild is he kept a tidy double life and he really let himself go into gluttony with fame. He did. Letting that fuel his dark desires. I mean, you want to pity his wife and kids, plus the victims, too. You really do. Along with the fact of how big of a success story he was to boot. Huh. Plot twist. Hannah and Christian's mom, Angie, wanted to have sex with her daughters, and sometimes Russell involved back then. That's what fuck, that's, that's what I'm talking about, like, woo -hoo -hoo. I couldn't believe that shit. I'm like, wow. Wild shit. And the fact that he gave, Russell gave, I think it was Hannah. It might have been Christian. I don't know. One of them a dildo and a laptop full of porn. Like, Jesus. Uh, it's fucking wild that the FBI reopened the case in 2020 over that. And they had to see shit like their mom fucking a horse and all this shit and the texts between her and Russell. Oh my. Jesus. Jared's in prison till 2030. Russell's in till 2034. And it's heartbreaking that Angie's daughters feel betrayed over that revelation. Yeah. Angie got 33 years. She'll be out in 2054. Wild. Rochelle's son moved to Taiwan and never looked back. Now I will say I do believe some people are conduits for others, and it's probably what Jared was for Russell and Angie. Definitely. Because if you really think about it, some people are conduits. You know, you have somebody that comes into your life, they give you either good or bad energy. And I think that's what happened here, it was bad energy. Oh my do I think Jared can recover after he gets out? Possibly. But I doubt anybody's going to take a chance with him. I really doubt. And he's going to even have a harder time trying to find somewhere to live because he's got to register. So he can't be within 500 feet of the school. So he's going to be having a hard time readjusting to life once he gets out. If he gets out. Never know. Uh, I doubt the three of them will be able to make a new living if they survive being locked up or even reform. It is hard to say because sometimes the time you gotta serve gets to you and you just decide, fuck it, I'm gonna kill myself and check out completely. 
happens. Oh my. It's hard to say with that shit. How do I rate this documentary? It's worse than Quiet on Set. Way worse. Absolutely worse. Like I said, for Quiet on Set, it's hard to rate because it's real shit. 9 out of 10 for me. Because I was just very blown away by all this shit with him. Like, you never really understand somebody. And you grow up with them and you're like, wow, he's a great inspiration and shit. And then you find him as a pedophile. It's like... <clears throat> It's, cr it's so absolutely mind-boggling, batshit crazy. It really is. And if you want to know where to watch this, it's on HBO Max. So, yeah, that's how I feel about this doc. Did I like it? Yeah, I was very surprised. <laughs> crazy shit. Um, but yeah, just, wow. And it sucks, and so many people idolized him growing up. And during that time, that's 15 years of idolizing. And you didn't know this shit about him. Like, wow. It's crazy. It's like every time there's a new starlet or whoever in the limelight, they're like, oh, this, this person is fucking amazing. This person is so wholesome and great and nice and polite. Take it with a grain of salt. You don't know them. You really don't know them. And I've mentioned this before. You don't know them just because they liked one of your quotes or comments or a post you did on them does not mean they actually give a fuck about you. They don't know you. You don't know them. That was just a spur of the moment for them that they liked it. It might not even been them. It might have been the fucking PR team with them that liked it. So there you go. I've had good celebrity react interactions over the years. I don't get all excited. I don't get all like, oh, they love me. They, they, they love me so much. They know me. I know them now. No, I'm not like that. Fuck no. Only on Saturdays at 2:45 in the morning. <laughs> no, I don't get I don't get hooked on that shit. No, I like it. I will make it a memory and share it, tag some friends, and call it a day. That's it. So. But if you don't like documentaries and true crime, it's not for you. If you like that kind of shit, this is definitely something for you to check out. So. I will be back with, um, other stuff then. So, stay tuned.